people. It's personal between me, and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. All right, Ben and Taylor here, True School Sports. I'm with the man himself, Mark Castro. How you doing, Mark? Doing good. How about yourself? I can't complain, man. Nice to finally meet you. You know, I've been seeing you on the television screen, and obviously uh, hearing a lot about you. Uh, all, all, all the way back in Florida, but uh, I wanted to, I wanted to talk to you, man. You're, you're, you're young, you're, you're young in your career. You know, you're uh, you know you're one of the top you know prospects on the in the Dazone stable. Um, how do you feel about where your career is at right now? Um, I feel like I'm blessed to be an opportunity, but uh, a lot of sacrifices for me and my family to be here. Uh, a lot of things behind the camera that that people don't like. If I was to tell you like what I had to do to be in this position, or like what you have to do to be in this position. People would want to be here. Yeah. But um, I just been blessed, man. Um, all glory to God, and just just gonna keep taking it. Work. See how far God wants me to go with this. Absolutely, man. Um, with, with you being a, a, a Mexican American fighter, I know a lot of times Mexican fighters don't have the reputation of being good defensive fighters. But you're a guy that seems to kind of take pride in that. Could you could you talk about like your, the pride you take in, in being a defensive fighter? I know you're aggressive as well, um, but. Uh, studying the history of, of Mexican fighters, uh, Mexican fighters are the real defensive fighters. Back in the 1920s, the Salvador Sanchez, um, those are the real... Miguel Canto, them guys. Yeah, yeah. Those are the real defensive fighters. That's where defense comes from. Um, so I just try to be like an old school fighter. Like, those are the real defensive fighters. It's not just... The Mexican style is there, but... The real Mexican style is the, def the defense. Yeah, kind of being an all-around fighter. And... Uh, Fighters are people that come to you that want to fight. Boxers are the one, the slick ones. But I feel like the real defensive fighters are the Mexicans back in the day. Yeah? yeah, more so than the Americans. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you really? Yeah. yeah. What, why? Why do you believe that? Because uh, the Mexicans had more footwork. Well. Okay. The Americans kind of had more of the muscle come forward. Yeah, kind of like the quick yeah. twitch muscles, like the pivoting yeah. and the blocking. Yeah, and... but I feel like the Mexicans have better overall fighters, but no disrespect to them. Yeah, that's just a. Hey, we all, we all, we all have our opinions. Yeah. yeah. Like Jack Dempsey and all that. Yeah. You mentioned Salvador Sanchez. Was was that was that like your favorite Mexican fighter? Or uh, one of them? He's, He's up there uh, because he paved the way for the legends I look up to, like the Durans and the, the Chavez's and then like the Canelo's. Like, like I look up to these guys and they've got them. So it's kind of like me looking up to Kobe, Kobe looking up to the, uh, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, yeah. And then Michael Jordan looking up to Dr. J. So oh, man. you have to pay respect to everybody. Yeah. Absolutely, I know. Um, you know, you, you mentioned earlier, you know, your father wrapping your hands. You talked about that that, that journey you had uh, to get to where you're at. Um, talk about your father. Like, um, what what kind of role has he played in, in your success? Uh, my dad is a like the major part of the success. Um, he knows he knows my body. He knows me better than I know myself. Um, even if I like try to say something, like he'll know it better than I do. And then we just kind of click, and it feels great to have him here by my side and just. Um, it's just there's been a journey, and yeah. we're gonna keep going. Well, um, like, what inspired you to want to box? I know that I know that's, that's, that's like a, quick, a cliche question that fighters get. Like, why did you want to box? But like, everybody has their own reasons. Like, what, what what's, what's the reason, Mark Castro? I, I, I didn't want to box. Uh, I did, my dad had me do it self defense, and then it was kind of a, a chore every single day. Yeah. Uh, he had his own boxing gym. He wanted me to learn how to fight for self defense. And eventually, he learned that seeing that I'm too good at playing individual sport. I mean, too good at playing team sport. Work too hard, so now we're here. Um, I didn't start liking it until I won my second world championship in Russia. Then I didn't become obsessed with it until like I seen, until I seen like Canelo train in person. Okay. And I realized where I could take it. Okay. I know, um, you, you, can, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't, didn't you fight Keyshawn Davis a couple times in the amateurs? Yes. You, 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 uh, you guys had like a, a bit of a rivalry, right? Yeah, it was 3-0. I've been on three times there. That's about it. Yeah. yeah. Is, is that a fight you like in the pros? I'm here to fight whoever. Ever? I'm here to fight whoever they put in front of me. Ladies yeah. I just want to get a fight, man, that they want to see. Yeah. Really it seemed like you 3 0 a lot of people in the amateurs because like, before I turned the camera on, I was telling you about you know, one of my friends back home and, and, Dom and Dominique Francis. Uh, what do you remember about those fights of Dominique Francis in the amateurs? Um, they were great fights. Uh, we always had the crowd hype. One was at National Silver Glove. The second one was at uh, Ringside. And the third one was at National Junior Olympics. Yeah. So I think they were all finals, uh, all great fights. And uh, I remember, like, he always came better every single time. Yeah. And uh, I always came better as well. And 
those are great fights because those elevate you to the next level. Yeah. It seemed like one of those uh, fights where you have like a, a good, speedy, athletic fighter against a, a good, intelligent, pressure fighter that can break someone down. Would, would you agree with that? Or Yeah, I feel like it was a lot of adjusting to the ring on the fly and like being prepared for the unexpected. Uh, I was not sure he was going to be in the weight class, but I, I was just prepared for worst case scenario. And we gave, I, I think we gave the fans a great fight. Yeah. I know. I know. With you being so young, you know, you, you fought on a lot of these uh, Canelo cards. I know you were on a Canelo. You debuted on a Canelo undercard. Um, psychologically, like, like, uh, what, what does it take to fight at that level so young? And and, and what uh, what do you think is done for your confidence? Um, it's different. Uh, there's nothing you can do to prepare for those moments. Williams. But once you get there, you realize like, all right, like if you're either gonna, you're either gonna rise to the occasion or you're gonna just like fall and like just get nervous from eating up by the crowd. But I feel like I've done a great job, um, just staying focused, staying in the gym, and um, at the end of the day, I know what I have to do to get done. The fans won't help me, but it, they do play a major role in the fight. Nah, absolutely. Um, Mark, you know, with, with, with you having five fights, like, I know this is your fifth fight, right? Fifth or sixth? Fifth? So, what what do you want to show, like, in this fight moving forward? I, I, I know, like, you know, you've shown aggressiveness, you've shown defense. What do you, what do you want to show in this fight? I just want to show that I keep improving every single day and that I stay in the gym. Um, that I'm just, uh, just want to fight a fighter that just wants to keep, continue to be even better and stay active. And um, other than that, I can't really... I feel like if I try to go out of my way to show something, that yeah, yeah. that's not going to be me. Um, I train every day. I get better every single day. So there, people will see over time. Yeah. Like the, like, 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 like the saying goes, the, the cream always rises to the top. Yeah. Basically, like, you're going to see there's something that you can't. I can talk all I want. You can see all you want. But people will see the improvements in, from time to time. Yeah. From fight to fight. And that only comes from hard work in the gym. Yeah. Right now, you know, we're here in the MGM Grand. This is like the mecca of boxing. Um, do you envision yourself like one day fighting here, you know, as a main event, maybe maybe being that next Mexican American star that that boxing is looking for? God willing, uh, I want to be here, fight at the, the biggest stages of them all, and uh, I'm gonna keep continuing putting in the work because that's where it all comes from. Putting in the work every single day in the gym and dedicating myself. Yeah. So I'm excited to do that yeah. for myself and my family. Yeah, you don't you don't really seem to have too much of an ego. Like like I, I know you mentioned God a lot. Um, talk about you know your your, your faith in, in 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 the Lord and in, in the Lord and how that plays a role like with just your boxing because you know boxing is a very unforgiving sport. So you kind of gotta believe in something, right? Yeah, um, I'm a big believer in God. Um, me and my family, it's like we've been through a lot as a family. I've been through a lot as as a boxer as and just to. It, it seems like a story couldn't be written any better because I feel like it's been blessed by by God Himself. Um, and it's just amazing how, like, I can tell you how amazing God is, but you won't be able to learn to know until you experience it yourself. Yeah, you got you got to have that intimate relationship with God. Yeah, you know? and it's so crazy because like, um, I give credit to all glory to God ever since like since the beginning, and like. Once I start trying to take credit for God's work, then that's when God was humble. Yeah, my, my, one of my good friends, uh, he's a fighter too. He, he has a saying. He says, uh, "You know, the the ego may trip, but the humble don't stumble." No, uh, that's pretty that's pretty true. But that was amazing. Yeah, because like you know, sometimes we get a little bit of success and we get a little bit of fame, and we start to think it's we're we're the great ones, you know. Yeah. But we gotta keep that. You got you gotta keep your boots on the floor at all times. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, Mark, I, I know you gotta be in the ring soon but uh, so I, don't, I don't want to hold you up much longer uh, the last question I guess I ask you is like um, what kind of relationship do you have with Canelo Alvarez uh, it's not really a, a relationship like uh, we just uh, fight on the same hey, cards hey what's up that's yeah. about it um, he shared a couple words with me uh, like one or two times and that's about it um, so it's not really a relationship but I, I, have, I have a feeling that he's watching yeah is there is there anything he told you in particular that, that, that stuck out that really was a gem. Keep, keep working. Keep working hard. Keep working hard. Stay focused. Yeah. You know, like, don't worry about nothing else. It's the simple stuff. He said, just keep working. I see you getting better. Just All right. Keep working. All right, Mark. Well, uh, any any final message to the boxing world before you go in the ring? To thank you. Appreciate all the support, and we're gonna see where we take this. We're gonna see where we take it, Mark Castro.
one of uh, the top prospects in boxing. Thank you for talking to True School Sports.